Today I tried evolution strategies. It's a different way to train your agent in reinforcement learning and it's cool because it's really simple, you don't need gradients, and it's highly parallelizable if you have thousands of computers to run it on. Now this is coming from a blog post by OpenAI and their mission is to discover and enact the path to safe artificial general intelligence. So they have quite a lot on their hands but it seems like they're doing good work so far. In the typical reinforcement learning scenario, you have some environment and you have an agent and the agent can take an action which affects the environment, which then spits out a reward and a new state of itself that goes back to the agent. Now we wanna change the way the agent behaves to increase the total amount of reward that it receives. Now when solving something like Atari, your state is the game's pixels. It could be like a width by height by time step matrix. You take that as your state, transform it by some differentiable function, typically a neural network, transform it into a distribution over the actions that you can take, and then you sample from that distribution. That becomes your action, which then you feed back into the game engine, which gives you a new state and a reward. So as the agent plays, certain actions will lead to positive rewards, and that's these green squares here. So from this time step to this time step, you want to look at the action that the agent took and increase its probability. So the way you can increase the probability of a certain action is you use a cross-entropy cost function, and the target would be a 1 for this action and zeros for the rest. And you can take the gradient of that cross-entropy cost function with respect to all your network's parameters, and that will tell you how to change your network's parameters. Now this has all been classic reinforcement learning where you have a differentiable function here that maps state to actions. But we're talking about evolution strategies in this video. So evolution strategies is a lot simpler than the classic method. The way it works is you start at some settings for your parameters and add noise to them and you get the reward at each one of these random offsets from your starting point. And then you just make a weighted average of these directions using that reward that you got for each, which will ultimately lead you towards parameters that give you more reward. And that's it. That's the whole idea behind evolution strategies. Now, evolution strategies is based off an idea called finite differences. So finite difference may sound a bit complicated, but you're likely already familiar with it, and the ideas behind it are pretty simple. We have some function f, this wavy thing here, and we want to get an idea of how it changes over a small change in its input. So all we do is evaluate it at a point w, and we get this blue line here, and then we evaluate it at a point w plus h, and we get this blue line, and then we just take the difference of the two. And so this is the change in the function's output for a small change in the function's input. So this h is the same as the noise we've been adding to our weights. Um, and that's the change in the function's input. But typically, we're concerned with where we are with w, the starting point. So you can see the finite difference right now is 0.34. And if I go over here, and it's now negative, you may notice that it kind of corresponds with the slope of the function. And that's what we use the finite difference for in evolution strategies. It's a way to approximate the slope or derivative of our reward function and if we have that we can use it to update the weights of our agent to increase the reward. So here I'm taking a small fraction of the finite difference and adding it to w every uh, time step. So if I start w off over here you can see we work our way up to this peak and if I start us off over here the finite difference is negative so I'm adding a fraction of a negative number and we again work ourselves up to this peak. So here we're using information from the finite difference to find peaks of our reward function and therefore get more reward. So I like that blog post so much and the example that they created for it that I made a simple one in JavaScript and basically what you see here is some random setting of parameters so we have two parameters, you know, this one on the horizontal axis and this one on the vertical axis. And wherever we're at with our current parameters, we take a bunch of samples. So we take 100 samples here 
just by adding Gaussian noise to where we currently are. And then for each sample, it looks at the background color. And if there's blue in the background color, it'll consider that a reward. And if there's not, it'll consider that zero. So right now, it's getting no reward. But if I draw some blue, you can see that it shoots right to where there's most reward. So I can keep drawing blue here. And our little guy will walk towards where the blue is darkest, you know, where there's most reward. And you can think of the way this works. You know, if I draw this blue, some samples will get reward that have the direction pointing towards the reward. And some samples will get no reward that are pointing away from the reward. And so the ones that get reward, we're going to move in their direction. So if I just bring this close enough, there you go. So it's a really nice, simple idea. And I think this uh, is just fun to play around with. I'll, I'll put the code for this in the description. So I wanted to try evolution strategies on one more problem, something a little more complicated. And so we have this kind of robot arm here. And the way it works is basically it takes my mouse position, feeds it through the, the weights of its brain, and then spits out some angles, which become the angles of these joints. And I want to train this arm to move this blue point as close to the mouse as possible. So this is like an inverse kinematics problem. I want to, through changing just the joint angles, move this blue point in the x and y plane to be close to the mouse. So I can train this. And the red you see is the arm, but under the influence of weights that have had random noise added to them. So that's kind of like the exploration of the arm. Now there's a faint cloud of points in the background, and those are random target points that I want the arm to move towards. Now every time step, I take a sample of a thousand, I believe, target points, and I start the arm off in a position. Then I modify the weights by noise and get a new n position, right, which is the red square. And if that red square is closer to the target than the arm was before, I give that a positive reward. I do this a thousand times, keeping track of the noise that I had applied and the rewards. And then I use the rewards to create a weighted average of that noise, and that becomes my update to my parameters. And over time, you can see it's kind of forming this average shape. And if I stop training, now the arm follows my cursor pretty well, you know? It's getting pretty close there. Now, if I wanted to improve the tracking of the arm, I could lower the learning rate or lower the standard deviation of the exploration so that it would kind of hone in and track my mouse better. But, you know, I'm pretty happy with this. It seems like it's working. So I'll put the code for this little robot arm in the description as well. And what's cool about this is it's really simple to change. You know, I can change the number of segments on the arm, the length of the segments. Um, I can change the number of parameters, how I transform the features to control the arm. And Evolution Strategies doesn't even care. It's, it's very simple to apply. So that's about it for this first episode of Today I Tried. Let me know in the comments if there's any kind of cool ideas you want me to try out. And, you know, I'll try to understand them, make some working examples, and communicate how they work to you guys. But anyways, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. See you later. Kind of like a crazy leg here.